What if I told you we can make the most delicious pie that you've ever tasted in a blender? I don't know if I believe me either. Welcome and welcome back. My name is Andrew and I create fire, greatness, sauce, wowie sauce, hotness, smoke, fireworks. I could create the whole 4th of July in this. That's, that's, not, that's not even me right there. I have no idea why I started like that. We are making a classic pie. I personally feel like this pie is mad underrated. We are making this bad boy in a blender and it's not because it's just easy. We actually have another purpose. Sweet potatoes are fairly stringy. And you know, my thought is if Spider-Man got his powers from somewhere other than a spider, it would have to be this or maybe a spaghetti squash. I said that line because I felt like it fit before I said it. Because of that stringiness, every bite you take or you know cut you make to the pie, ultimately the stringiness to me kind of gets in the way of that amazing taste. It's just sort of like a you know orange juice with pulp. That's that's uh so that's not a knock on orange juice with pulp. I'm just saying that's not my preference, but I still drink it. So making this pie not only helps that stringiness, but it also brings like this almost cheesecake mousse combination texture thing to the dish. And I'm a texture person, so let me show you how to make it. Okay, so let's begin by bringing our water to a boil and then tossing our potatoes in there. The water is fairly hot, so don't really toss them in there. Just carefully place each potato in slowly as possible. This is gonna take a good little bit to cook. So we're gonna move on to making the crust. The crust we're making is for a nine inch pie pan. We're gonna use a food processor just to make the process easy. We're gonna toss our graham crackers in there and then pulse until it turns into crumbs. You don't need a food processor. You could do this with a hammer, a back of a spoon, a baking roller, anything you can use to pretty much just bang on stuff. From here, open your processor, add your sugar in, and then you're gonna pulse that a few more times to get everything combined. If you have a big enough processor for this next step, you could pretty much just handle it all in the container. If not, just dump your mixture into your pan, add your melted butter, and then you're gonna start to mix that to combine. Just as a heads up, the butter is gonna start to look like it was completely soaked up by the graham cracker mixture. But no worries, just keep stirring, keep folding, keep pushing it down, until everything looks uniform. Once it all looks good, start pressing your mixture together to form it across your pie pan. If you don't have a pie pan available, all good. As you can see here, I'm using a springform pan. If using a springform pan, when you're doing the crust, you have the option to bring it up across the sides of the pan, but you only wanna go up about an inch and a half to two inches. That's gonna be the thickness of your pie. The other option is you could absolutely just play it safe and you put all of the graham cracker crumbs just at the bottom of the pan. If you go that route, you definitely wanna oil the sides of the pan. This way your pie doesn't stick to the pan. So for me, I actually went with the option of adding it up the sides of the pan. And uh, unfortunately I went just a wee bit too high. But although I jacked up the crust, there's absolutely a way to fix it. Now usually, you know, folks would just create a whole nother pie and probably just show that in a video. So you don't really see the mistake. But I figured I could show how I do it just in case you run into the mistake. This way we can fix it together. And now I get to show you what else I like to do with whipped cream. From here, just bake your crust for a few minutes and then move on to the next step. So to make the filling, we need to make sure our sweet potatoes are complete. Once they're fork tender, you should be able to turn off the stove and go empty the water. Now these are gonna be really, really hot. So you could either wait until they cool, which is gonna take quite some time, or you could run some cold water over them. As I said before, we're gonna toss this all in a blender. So what you're gonna do is peel the skin off the potato and toss that right in the blender. You're literally gonna follow behind that with everything else, one after the other. Give that a good blend. And if you have a high powered blender, don't do it too long because you may start to cook the pie. From here, it's pretty simple. You're just gonna pour the mixture right into the pie pan and you definitely wanna make sure that it's leveled out. Usually I'll give it a couple shakes, a couple taps, just to make sure everything's good and level. From here, you're pretty much set. You're gonna take that, toss it in the oven and give it some time to cook. Take a look at the rest of the clips so this way you can see 
I'll touch the pie up to make it look perfect. Okay, I got something. I got something. Here it is. I got something. Nope. I don't got it no more. I don't got it no more. It ain't there. I'm still looking for it. Wait, something coming to me. Okay. Uh, I got it. My name is Andrew and I chef up vegan sweets in the kitchen and then I feed it to my kids that be tripping. So what they only like five years old, I still be like, yo, Stop. They say, dad, I'm gonna tell mom. I'm like, oh, I'll give you some pie if you stop snitching. As for your mom, uh, I tell her talk to the palm. Uh. <laughs> Let me stop. I don't, I don't talk to my kids or my wife like that. Honestly, they would whoop my ass.